Welcome back to What Artie Nibs with General Disturbance. This is the Conqueror Gun Carriage. It's the Tier 10 British SVG, and we're on the south spawn of Cliff. And it's under the command of the Baseman from Hell. Yes, he's back again, and he's, this time he's in the Orbital Laser Cannon, as the uh, CGC is otherwise known, firing a 9.2 inch howitzer at the enemy. Now, last few seconds before the game starts. Time to roll out. And we're off. Now, in this replay, uh, I do know that uh, the base man had quite a good battle in terms of um, knowing where the enemy would be. He predicted where a lot of the tanks would be. And that's why he gets a lot of damage on the enemy. And far from actually going over to the usual spotting points on the west side, or the usual firing position on the west side, he's actually headed over to the east side. And he's setting up, getting ready to shoot. I think he's found his firing position just behind this tree. Just wants to get it right. Far enough back that he can shoot at the enemy. Okay, that looks good. Now he's gone to battle assistant view. You know that the uh, Conquer gun carriage fires with such a high trajectory that the shells are coming in almost from above the enemy. And that batch at 25 ton, if he stays there, he is going to get absolutely hammered because these rounds have the capability of doing alpha damage of 1200 hit points. So that Batchak could soon find himself completely devoid of health. Well, that's a splash for 224. And in many other RTs, you'd be quite happy with a direct hit for 224. But that was a splash. Now, 38.0 seconds on the reload. He's not using premium consumables. And with an object 277 and an M48 pattern, firing on an IS-7 on the plateau above the Western Pass. And we're getting a fire request on the 277. But uh, what the base man's doing instead is he's just adjusting his firing position a little. I think he intends to shoot over the... Uh... No, he's decided to go up to the Western Pass again. So he's spun the vehicle round and looking at the enemy. There was a whole bunch of enemy congregated together and... Ideally, with the Conqueror gun carriage, you do that because it's got such a large blast radius. You want to hit as many enemies as you can at once. And he got a direct hit there. So he knew where the enemy were. And this is what he said about the predicted where the enemy would go. And so he fired a round in, got a direct hit straight away. So somebody is going to be missing a huge amount of hit points right now. Of course, we don't know who it is and how many they're missing, but... Certainly, it will be a lot. Now, only a few seconds to go before he'll be ready to shoot again. And I think he's electing to shoot at the same position again. Rounds out straight away in the same spot. And another direct hit! So, really, they are going to be hurting like mad in that little corner right now. But this IS-7, he's all on his own. He's now being attacked by two tanks, an Object 268 and an object 277 so he really does need some help and an E100 who came around the corner to try and attack the IS-7 from behind has just been wiped out but that 277 is taking a big chance poking over that line like that and I think base man's seen what's happened and realized that he can get a direct hit on that object 277 taking him out of the game round out and yes he does and that saves the IS-7 from that attack The IS-7 is probably a little happier now. He was using his T-key to try and attract attention, get some help from his teammates. Now we're halfway through the reload, almost ready to shoot again. There was an enemy tank, an FV-4005 seen around that corner. Um, and there might be a griller around there too. But we know where the Object 2684 is facing off against the IS-7. Unfortunately, we can't hit the 2684 because he's behind the... Uh, the rock in the center of that um, um, plateau. I think he's going to go for another shot around that corner. Fires the round in and 
Yes, he gets another direct hit. So whoever is around that corner, they are going to be missing a huge amount of hit points by now. And it's just so obvious to fire at that corner, especially when the enemy were seen it around that corner before. So somebody is picking up a huge amount of spotting damage. And I hope it's the IS-7 because that guy has been doing a lot of help holding that position on the uh, western plateau. Is he, he going to fire another one around the corner? I think he is. Round out. Did he get it? Oh, no, this time he hit the ground. But that doesn't mean he didn't hit anyone around that corner. There's a good chance he did. And that 268's just blown his shot, and he's reloading. The I-7's coming up for another look. We also know there's a Jaeger E100, a Jagdpanzer E100, somewhere in grid square B1. Now, he may be one of the ones that moved up to D1. Got an Object 430U trying to come around the cliff. And that's the tier 10 version, medium tank. Dialing in. Gonna give a nice surprise. Here you are. Shell from a 9.2 inch howitzer. It was a near miss, a splash, but it still did a lot of damage to him. Now the one good thing about this position, the firing from this position, is the enemy RT aren't really going to be looking for you over here because it's actually far away from the cap uh, and the normal areas that uh, RT are located in. So it can be quite a good idea to pick the, um, the, the spot that's not used the least by RT. Another spot that can be used is somewhere along the cliff edge, uh, up on the next plateau. Uh, somewhere around about J6, J7. That's also been used for RT. And if you're in a small RT like a Burt, which has got short range, you can use the cliff edge. But uh, we're aiming for an M48 pattern, hiding behind that house. And we killed him! Oh my god, he must have come around the corner, hoping to get a shot in, and then received a round from the Conqueror gun carriage, which wiped him out. Now it was a blind shot kill. But one thing I do know is from that shot on the Object 430U, um, the base man managed to pick up 1.6k of damage, uh, stun assistance because the 430U was taken out immediately afterwards. There's the Jagdpanzer, the Jaegeru. He's at the back. He is in C1 now. Looks like we're going to try a shot on the Gorilla. Or is he going to try a different target? No, he's fired at the Gorilla. And it's a good shot. Destroyed half the building. Oh, we lost the IS-7. The Object 268 was taken out. Taking him out, rather. And the Object 268 is about to get drilled from behind by a T110E3. And I think he knows it. That's why he's running away. Surely. Or oh, he's gone into a defensive position. There's the Gorilla. And he's now missing a huge amount of hit points. So I think that shot did work. It actually did do a huge amount of damage to the Gorilla. There's the Jaegeru. Almost on zero hit points. Rams out on him. And yeah, he damaged him, and he's killed immediately afterwards, so he picked up the stun assist. Now, there's only one enemy left. It's the T110E4. He's in that corner. He's only missing a tiny bit of hit points, so he probably was one of the ones that was hiding at the back. Oh, he's just been ammo racked and blew his turret off. That's the end of the game. The Leopard one managed to put a round in, ammo rack him, and blow him to bits. Okay, and here's the end of battle result. It's a first class tanker for Base Man from Hell in the Conqueror gun carriage. He also picked up a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. He got 17, and he managed to get a Confederate because he hit more of the enemy than anyone else on his team. At least six tanks subsequently taken out by others. And the win rate for that battle was 3663, so a very, very good score. Let's have a look at the uh, team scores. Well, he got the second highest damage on his team, 3444, but uh, there was a higher damage 
on the WYSI 111.5, hey, he managed 3,697. And the Object 2684 that was attacking the uh, IS-7, he managed 3,692. So he came second on damage, and then came the base man with his 3444. When it came to kills, it was the Leopard 1 who managed to get the highest man. He managed to get four. Uh, then came the WYSI 111.5A with three. And then we've got uh, the base man with two, and the FB4005 Stage 2 with two as well. Um, when it came to base XP, it was the base man who was top. And obviously, as you know, he not only did a lot of damage, but he did a lot of stun assistance. He got a base XP of 1,041. And the next high scorer was the WYSI 1115A, then the TVPT 5051. So if we look at the detail report, we can see why. He fired 10 shots, got 4 direct hits, 4 penetrations. So yeah, those direct hits really did hit the enemy hard in that corner. And 5 splash. Damage of 3,444 hit points, all at more than 300 meters. He hit eight of the enemy and killed two of them, and he did 1,741 hit points of stun assistance of seven stuns. And that's where his base XP managed to get boosted up so high. On a premium count, he earned 67,269 credits, and he got a personal reserves bonus for 50%, earning 33,635, and that brought his total to 100,904 credits. And even though these rounds are really expensive, 2,450 credits a round, he, after, even after paying for the ammunition resupply, he still took away 76,404 credits for that one battle. He got two, battle, uh, two credits for the um, uh, Confederate, and he also earned 12 uh, bonds for the battle as a whole, so he took away 14 bonds. And he also managed to pick up 1,561 uh, XP, and there was no multipliers, so I'm afraid that's all the experience points he took away. But he says, when they're invisible, but you know where they are. Well, we did see them right at the start, but he just kept pumping rounds into that corner, and they just kept taking the shots. And as a result, they kept losing uh, hit points in the process and building up base man's score. So he came out of that battle with a very nice reward, a huge amount of credits, which obviously will help him in other games. So if you enjoyed this replay, please give it a like and do subscribe to our channel. And hopefully it'll be your replay that I'll be featuring in the next video.